If you're not setting a standard and expectation, you can't get frustrated when things don't go how you want them to go. Dwayne, delivering a project means that you're going to be bringing in subcontractors to deliver various parts and parcels of work. How do you deal with contractors that, you know, make to make sure that they actually work in accordance with the standard with which you want to deliver your projects? Um, this, I think this is a really good one because it's something we've worked on really hard over the years and um, it's one that we've um, had some comments recently when I was doing a podcast interview with one of our contractors that does a lot of work for other builders and the other builders said to him, how do you manage dealing with Dwayne Pierce? Like we see all of his stuff and he, is he like anal? Like what's, what's the standard? <laughs> um, and look, I, I think that other builders are asking those questions means that we are setting a good standard. And the reason that we've been able to get to that um, stage is like we've got a system and a process for basically everything in our business now. And one of those, or a couple of those systems, one of them is actually called working with DPS Constructions. And so that is a matter of, like a lot of the stuff we talk about is about setting an expectation. So if I want contractors to perform work to the quality that I expect, it's about me setting a standard first. So um, we'll never ever take on a new contractor without having uh, a phone call and at least one in-person meeting with them. Like I'll generally try and meet them on other projects. And then at those um, meetings, I'll show them a copy of our working with DPS Constructions or the office will email it to them and we'll run through that. And one of the things that I, and, and look, when you set a high standard, a lot of people are gonna run away. And we quite often, well, when, when we're in positions where we are looking for contractors, we quite often have to go through a lot to find one that wants to work with us because we do set a high standard. And for me, that's a reflection of my business. I've, it's taken me a very long time to build the reputation we have. So that can all be ruined in one job. So like one of the things that I point out very quickly when I meet a um, contractor is the, like the standards don't mean anything to me because I believe, like especially here in Queensland, the, the standards and tolerances guide is not really up to my scratch. So. And over the years, we've had contractors say to us, well, I'm, I'm not fixing that because it's, it passes a standards and tolerances test. And I'm like, well, that's not my standard. If you want to do my work, this is my standard. So I think having a document or a process that you can run through with contractors that lets them see right off the bat how it, things are going to happen when they work with you. And, and it that has to cover everything. Like That's just not about the quality of work you expect them to do. That's um, when you expect them to have invoices in, like uh, what do you expect when they send an invoice in, when, when will they get paid, all those types of things. And look, most businesses should be doing a basic amount of that anyway with their period subcontracts and all those types of things. But beyond that, and like we have it in Live Life Bill, we have those subcontractor agreements where we talk through with our members about actually outlining everything you expect. And so one of our other systems is securing the site. And so we have that system that goes out to a new contractor and then we have another system that goes out to all of our contractors when they're getting their work orders and things that again just keep setting a standard of what we expect at the end of the day. We want the site cleaned every day, we want the site fence shut and locked up, we want the house locked up. Like it, some people probably laugh and think, oh, that, like, again, it's that assuming thing. You're like, why, why would I have a system for that? Like, they should lock the fence, they should clean the site. But, if you're not setting a standard and expectation, you can't get frustrated when things don't go how you want them to go. Yeah, I think I see what a lot of builders do is they feel, well, I just can't find decent people to work with. So <clears throat> I have to lower the bar of what my expectations are mm. rather than what do I want my business to look like? And then how do I raise the expectations yeah. <clears throat> of those that I'm working with so that I get better results? And it's really interesting because what you've found in doing that is you've then found contractors who also want to grow themselves, yeah. who are aligned with your values, who want to grow their businesses, and yeah. you get that fantastic match of people who are like-minded that you get to do business with every day. And it makes your business better. Yeah, and it's just amazing to see. So how do you do research and check the previous work of, of subcontractors and those kinds of things before you start with them? Uh, look, this one, this one can be a little bit tricky, but like, I think the important thing is like most builders are going to have a, 
uh, a group or a, or a bunch of building mates that they can talk with regularly. So my, generally, when I'm when we are in a position we need a new one, first point of contact is another builder I know. Um, I'll get some contacts. I'll ring them, have a chat to them on the phone. Um, but I'll always go to one of their jobs. And uh, look, we've had a situation uh, not too long ago where we we did all of our homework and we got the contractor to the site. And then that contractor um, had employed someone new and just completely dropped the ball. And look, we, they fixed it. We had to have conversation with them. But be, again, because I set the standard of what I expected first, all the costs were back on them and they resolved the issue and we moved on. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting thing. When we did take our Elevate members through that subcontractor and supplier agreement, you could see the uh, light bulbs going off of, oh my gosh, all the things that I regularly have problems with, I can actually preempt them and get agreement yeah. uh, for a standard of quality I'm expecting that then means that if they don't measure up to that, if they've signed this, that means that I can then transfer costs, time delays, those kinds of things back to them, which is so important. If you're yeah. as a builder, just constantly being the one who is the bottleneck between what a client has agreed to pay <laughs> and then yeah. at the whim of what subcontractors keep stuffing up and then charging you extra for or not quoting correctly and charging you extra for, you're in the middle of that crunch and never able to actually get ahead. So that setting expectations piece is so important. Oh, definitely. And at the end of the day, like it's it's about finding people that are as passionate as you. So like I'm passionate about carpentry and building. So we've found like we've, our electrician is passionate about his job. He knows everything, our plaster. Like if you, if you put it out there, uh, you're going to get it back. But I think it is important to remember that you, you are going to have a few trials along the way. You are going to have a few things that go wrong. And and that's just all part of you setting an expectation and getting the people that work for you to the level that you want your business to be. And it's, it's a really important part um, of your business. And it's a really valuable part to put time and energy into.